when we're having this day where everything is just aligned and we're really creative and we're getting a lot of things done in a short period of time and like almost time is standing still and you're, you're just getting so much done then before you know at the end of the day is here or you're aligning in conversations and you're just feeling the groove and everybody's connecting with you and getting what you're saying. You guys know what I'm talking about. You have quote good days like that. That's your flow state. You just didn't realize it and you didn't realize how to maybe intentionally activate it but it doesn't have to be by accident. You can actually get more days repeat repeatedly in that flow. Welcome to this chapter of the business library. In this chapter, we're going to be speaking about flow state. And I have Je Jennifer Washington on, who is a high performance coach that helps leaders and speakers break through and find their passion and really accelerate their life and their purpose. And also entrepreneurs, because otherwise we wouldn't be having her on here. So it's a pleasure having you on. And one of the first questions I wanted to ask you to frame up this whole episode is what is flow state? Yeah, that's such a great question. So, so many business leaders, right, are what I will call high performers, people that are naturally driven, people that want to master their craft or whatever they're giving in any capacity of the world, including their business. So high performance you know, top performance has always been a word that a lot of people utilize and want to tap into as business owners. I consider flow state as equated to elite performance. So high performance is here, elite state is here, and that requires you to be in flow state. And what do I mean by that? Flow state truly is your unique way that your body gets into a state that is more highly productive and more high performing. It is unique to each of us, but when you understand how to actually tap into your unique way that your body likes to roll, that your body and your brain is at its peak most of the day, it allows you to create sustainability in that. When you go about it, understanding what is unique to how your body and your brain thrive in what communities. The problem is with just trying to force and grit and discipline through really trying to be high performance all the time. You're either exhausted by the end of the day or the quality isn't quite there or it's unsustainable. What I teach and as a practitioner and healer by trade, that's where I kind of learned a lot of these neuroscience techniques to understand how the brain and the body chemistry truly work optimally and now how it works optimally for you. And there's activities that you can do to optimize your unique kind of genetics or DNA to allow you to stay in higher levels of peak performance, elite performance for a sustained period of time. So I would say the byproduct of flow state is elite performance, which for me is a little bit above high performance. It allows you to get a little bit more of a nudge, but actually feel high energy, high vitality doing it because you're in your new unique flow. You've tapped into your unique body brilliance to bring out the high performance as a natural byproduct, elite performance as a natural byproduct. The tools I use with my clients to actually get you into your unique flow to allow you to be elite and high performance is profound and it doesn't take a lot of things. It's just consistently getting on the map to do them. I agree with you. My definition of flow state, there's nothing above it. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing more productive than flow state. That's yeah. the absolute peak. Well, it's your highest potential. You guys, that's what I mean by flow state because the byproduct again is elite performance or high performance. When you're in your flow, and I want to go a little deeper on this description because some people are like, well, what do you mean totally? <laughs> think about all of us have had this at some point. You think about it too. When we're having this day where everything is just aligned and we're really creative and we're getting a lot of things done in a short period of time and like almost time is standing still and you're, you're just getting so much done then before you know at the end of the day is here or you're aligning in conversations and you're just feeling the groove and everybody's connecting with you and getting what you're saying. You guys know what I'm talking about. You have quote good days like that. That's your flow state. You just didn't realize it and you didn't realize how to maybe intentionally activate it, but it doesn't have to be by accident. You can actually get more days repeatedly in that flow. When you're in a flow state day after day, end of the week, you're getting more done. End of the week, you've had more quality and you have to go, you don't have to go back and redo things because the quality was there. So that's what I mean by that. You guys, all of us have experienced it. Guaranteed you have, right? It's just like the runner's high, you know? We've all had that flow, but knowing how to access it consistently is what allows you to have that elite, high performance, sustainably 
no matter the environment. And this includes a lot of businesses that go through growth and change. We all have it, right? You know, we all have times where we're going to have problems in our business or growth and challenge problems. But when you're really in this flow, it allows you to stay grounded in your unique brilliance, your unique gifting, the way that your brain and body want to feed into the world and game over. Things get really easy for you. So everyone just, I wanted to clarify that definition even a little bit more because truly the byproduct is elite high performance. If you understand to start here versus trying to push grind grit to get high performance, that's not sustainable and it's exhausting. Okay. The way we're talking about the way we're going to go into it today is giving you frameworks to start getting into flow more consistently more powerfully no matter your environment when you got this down and you're in your highest potential self and by the way that's going to show up differently every day because no day is perfect when you learn how to go with what's in the present moment and cap it out game over you guys become unstoppable in your business in your team and beyond so you mentioned framework mm -hmm. um, i think now that we, we got clarified what is flow state that framework, like, how do we enter it? We know yeah. it's good. We like it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it just, it feels like, as she was referring to, was like forcing it. You're trying every kind of different solution yeah. to get into flow state, but it seems like nothing's working. Right, right. You know, it's just like so many things. You guys think about this, not just for flow state. Any of you listening to this podcast would probably agree. Anytime you force something, including flow state. You guys, this is human psychology, by the way. Anytime you force a relationship or force communication or force doing something when you're not feeling good, and it doesn't end up very quality. You guys, this is part of psychology because your brain and body don't do well in a force situation no matter what any you know, like old school traditional high performer thinks. You guys, grit, discipline, pushing through things is not how you get anything done well, including flow state. I want to be very clear. This is science-based, everyone. And by the way, I'm not dogging grit, discipline, perseverance. What I'm saying is when you're trying to force something to happen, including gritting, disciplining through it, it's not going to go anywhere fast or end up being not very good quality. There is a place for discipline and grit. There's place for perseverance. I talk about this all the time, but how you enter into grit and discipline is very vital to look at. And in flow state, we acknowledge that, that it's not about force and many things in your life when we force, I just said it, things don't go well. Same thing with flow state. When you learn, we'll go through some frameworks that I can teach you guys today to help you with that. But understanding on a bigger picture Flow state, quality of, of performance, elite performance does not happen consistently when you force any type of technique, any type of behavior, any type of activity. And I know all of you listening have examples of that and where maybe it was pretty good performance, but not where you wanted it and you feel yucky. And so, and this is in so many aspects of our life, you guys, our brain and body need flow, need ability to be in a space that feels easy, that it feels safe to actually do its thing. A fight or flight state, which is where we go as high performers, push, push, and 20 things a day, our brain and body chemistry shut down. Did you guys know that? When we're in stress and push and push and push the performance, you guys, even the Olympi Olympians know this, okay, that just got done with the Olympics. They are not in fight or flight, you guys. They have endorphins going because they're excited to hear the gun go off and perform, but they have learned, many of the high level athletes have learned what I'm talking about, that we have to get into a calm state and ease and flow to actually perform well. And this goes for you. So first understanding what the definition is and what we're talking about, this is the best place to go if you do want elite performance. What do I mean by frameworks? You guys, there's something that I teach in my program. It's pretty high level framework to help a lot of high performing leaders that have a lot of things going on and want to create high performance for them and their team consistently with challenge or change. But I can give you a few tools today to start creating traction and getting more used to what flow even feels like and how to accelerate that. Um, so I'd love to share some of those techniques right here if you'd like me to share. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. I that's would not to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys, as I said, all of you have felt it at some point, and what we're trying to do is get you to do it consistently because that's associated to higher consistent elite performance and doing it in a state that feels easy and vital and high energy. 
So for those of you who are like, well, I feel it once in a while, but I, I'm not sure what brings it on or how I can engage it. You guys, first and foremost, it requires you to get used to that feeling more and more and more. And then some of this other stuff I'm going to give you comes into play naturally. To understand what makes you feel and flow and fully you and like things are just happening because you're communicating well and you're performing well, you got to start experimenting with things. So this is what I have people start doing. Go to, around different people go around different events or activities in your local community and start connecting with these people. Do they make you feel really high energy? Do they make you feel more you? Like you just find that you riff with them really well or that you perform with them really well. You just start getting in environments where you're starting to go, wow, this environment makes me feel good and I get a lot done and a lot of quality. Well, this person and this community of people help me actually be more productive and get creative ideas for my content creation right? Because this is what I mean is getting around people and places and environments and see where you perform best. And this, guess what you do from there? You start gaining evidence. You start going, wow, this environment brings the best out of me. These people bring the best out of me. And you start making evidence of that and you start bringing more of those type of people and environments into your world. That is the first step, okay? Always looking at people and environments or activities, okay? people, environment activities that you have found consistently and that you can practice right now that brings out high quality, that brings out what you feel the real you is and your gifting. And you want to start being around those people and those environments more. Okay. And that may take you time for some of you. Maybe you're into this more and you're like, yeah, I know what that is. Others of you need to get on the mat and practice this, but that is the first thing you want to do. And then just keep leaning into those environments and leaning into those people and activities more and more often. The second thing I encourage people to always look at now that you've found the environments and people that help you get in that flow, <laughs> this is going to sound really funny, but this is something I teach all the time. And this just sounds so basic. We get way too much information thrown at us every single day, every single day, whether it be social media we're on, we're on the computer, we're getting like 400 or 500 times more information thrown at us than like Laura Ingalls Wilder day, like a hundred years ago, our brain and our nervous system can't handle that. This is why a lot of us feel really like jittery in the middle of the day or scattered. And we feel like we can't concentrate on something because we're bringing in so much information. Your body and brain need to be bored. You guys, this is my second technique I'm going to give you. It's going to sound really funny. Your body and brain need to be bored to process everything that you've had going on in the day and allow it to clear it out and activate other things that you want to use later that day. Creative zone, solution-oriented zone of your brains, okay? So what I encourage people to do, we hear this all the time, but get off the phone, you know, um, get away from your um, computer for a while, but I'm going to take it one step further. Find periods of your day where you're unplugging from technology and from information and go and sit in a chair and stare at a blank wall. Stare at a blank wall, you guys. Your, your brain needs to be bored so it can facilitate some of this information that you've been processing all day. Think about when you eat food, right? You allow it to digest. Think about when you run out the door and you don't let it digest. You kind of get an upset stomach, right? You guys, the same I'm thing. Like, is, dude, why? My right. stomach just upset so much. Well, you guys, seriously, I, you know, I'm a practitioner, PT by trade, and I used to do a lot with nutrition. And I always talk about sitting down and eating your food so your body can actually process it effectively and get the right nutrients extracted from that food. When you're right out the door, you guys, your body doesn't do that as well. It's the same thing with information, you guys. That's energy. That's something your brain has to process. When you actually look at a blank wall, not something like a picture where you start process, like literally look at a blank wall. You guys, I do this on days where I know I have to get a lot done or there's a lot on my plate. And I literally would just sit in a chair and look, like, I literally have a blank wall right in front of me right now. Because, and I just sit there for five minutes. It allows my brain to process some things that I've been looking at all day. It allows my body to settle away from the screen and go, oh, wow, it's safe to process this. She's not running and going on to the next thing. Your brain and body want to be bored and they want to feel safe. When it's bored, it also allows it to feel safe to actually process some of the stuff we're talking about. So you guys, I'm telling you, this is, this is magic for people. This is neuroscience at its best, okay? First, find out where the people and places and activities that make you feel like you're high performing, that your giftings are coming out, that you're feeling so you and in your jam, 
The second, have things peppered throughout your day that you have boredom. Allow your brain to reset because then when it does and it clears all that stuff out, it's like, okay, I can now do the things you want me to do or come up with creative ideas for content or go to that staff meeting for the team and come up with solutions for the problems that we're having maybe in the growth of our business. Okay. You guys, there are so many other tools that are deeper to that. And I will say these are scratching the surface, but you're still going to get some momentum in that. So be bored. (laughs) Look at a wall during the day. The third technique I'm going to give everybody is you've got to be very careful not to hop around on tasks. A lot of people I work with have a lot of things going on and they have people coming to them, right? And demanding things from them. Or maybe you're ADHD, you guys. And I've worked with a lot of high performers like that where they have a tendency to hop around um, without get, staying focused on one thing. Side note, this is why I coach because depending on the person in their physiology, there's certain techniques that they need to create more flow. But I'll say this from the, from a long shot and a short shot, no matter who you are, whether you have ADHD or not, when you have a lot of people coming to you or you're getting notifications on your email, you can't actually do what you are doing right now well. Okay. So I encourage everyone, whatever project you're working on, you want to work on it for a minimum of 30 minutes to 90 minutes. Okay. It gives your brain an opportunity to stay focused on one thing. If you're checking your phone, you guys, every five minutes when you're working on a task for 30 minutes or 90 minutes, your brain actually does get distracted and it takes five to 10 minutes to get back on course. Did you know that everyone, if a, if a person comes in to ask you for something that they need from you, from your office, okay. It takes you a moment to go from that thing that they wanted to get back onto task. It takes like five, 10 minutes. And this is why when you go back to the task, you're like, what was I thinking? And it's harder to get into your flow. Okay, you guys, this is such a huge technique for you. If you're in your office, you tell your team members, I'm, I'm blocked out for 30 minutes or 90 minutes. Or if you're on your computer and you live by yourself and you're working from home, get off your notifications and get your phone away from you. Okay, this is really, really key on getting you into and in staying in your flow and your concentrated state. If you're looking at your phone all the time or getting notifications, it takes energy to get you back into your lane and it wastes time. It takes five to 10 minutes by science. You guys, this is real stuff. Um, So those are probably the top three things I would give to people to start working on staying in flow. Find out what activities, environments, and, and people bring you into that. I'm mastering things. I'm getting things done with quality. Repeat that. Second, pepper in things during your day where you're bored so you can process things and the new creative things come out of you that are just genius. You can start implementing them right away. And then third, you've got to set up blocks of time, you guys. And maybe you have to start with 30 minutes because you're busy versus 90 minutes. It doesn't matter. But where notifications are off, people are not allowed to contact you, you guys, because it takes too much energy to get back in your lane. Those are three techniques that if you guys start doing them daily, will start tapping you into the flow. In the order I gave you is really, really key, okay? This will start getting you used to connecting to your body and knowing how to tap into that. If you guys are wanting more techniques, and usually we're going to need more than that because we do have a lot coming at us every day, connect with me. You know, there's a lot of um, clients that I work with to tap in at a deeper level. Um, These are just creating traction, but allow you to start feeling a little bit of this and you'll watch your performance, your productivity, your connection with others and connection really to yourself really take off. I like that you gave some practical implementable tips that people can do out and take action on. That's one thing I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Uh, Never heard about staring at the wall. Um, sitting on a chair. I'm, I'm going to try that one. Yeah. I can attest to the power of turning off notifications on your phone. Yeah. I will, I have only like text messages because yeah. that's media family have that number they go to. But if we have the notification, it's basically yeah. turned off. At least yeah. the audio and the pop up part yeah. might not pop up with like a red dot, but yeah. that's it on yeah. the app. Yeah. But that really helps me to yeah. stay focused. Yeah. I will yeah. And they usually work do, for 30 you guys, minutes. And this is a big deal with notifications. That's it's true what you just said, but the, the reason why I put the tools in the order I did is because you need to know what gets you into flow. Because if you get yourself all your notifications off and you're in a low frequency and you're in you had a stressful team meeting or whatever it was and you feel already out of flow, you guys no amount of notifications turned off is gonna help you. 
So this is why I always say, you guys, they are really important. All these tools I gave you in the order I gave them is going to be the most effective. Know how to get into your jam a little bit and then turn off the notifications. And then after you're done, stare at the wall. If you've had like all you guys, there's a reason why we're going in this order because your body needs a certain step framework to activate in certain ways. This is why people will say to me, well, I turn off all the notifications, Jennifer, but I'm still not in flow. I'm like, well, again, we talked about that. Why coaching often is necessary to go a little deeper to find out what gets you in flow. So then all these other things we're talking about can start creating a domino effect for you. But yes, it's not that I'm saying notifications turning off is bad. It's a start, just like these techniques are starts, but ultimately it's gonna take a little bit deeper level of work to get that out a little bit more, especially if it's been dormant in, for, in you for a while. It's just like any other thing. Just, I always bring up gym examples because I was an athlete for so long. It's just like going to the gym for the first time in like six, seven, eight months. You may remember how to do a bicep curl, but your body doesn't, you know, it's going to take some time to roll through that. Same thing with flow state, you guys. Same thing with intuition. Same thing with other skills you have you know, in your business that you utilize, if you don't work on it every day, it's going to go dormant. Flow state is a huge thing that is missing in a lot of business leaders. And they think they know how to access it and they don't, you guys, this is why I work with them. They don't even realize how to move back into this brilliance in a powerful way. So these techniques will help. Yes, turning off notifications is a huge help, but learning how to tap into this frequency of you is very vital. So all these other things you're, you're doing, including turning off the notifications and making sure you have time to yourself, work and work well. And it is very person specific. A person that has ADHD versus a person that doesn't. A person that maybe has several people that they have to lead under them versus a person that just has themselves. Like there's all these different nuances that we can layer in to create a lot of great benefits for you, your team, and that you guys end up knocking in the park no matter what comes at you, no matter what challenge comes at you. I'm telling you, this stuff makes all the systems <laughs> that you have in your business that are so important, you guys, and all the to-dos you have for your team even with all that out there, if you don't know how to tap into this, they are not going to do those systems well. They're not going to perform their duties well. When you learn how to tap into this in a more powerful, consistent way, game over. Your team and you win. And when people get that, you guys, you can get through anything with flow, with effectiveness, and honestly, affect your bottom line, my friend, because that's what we care about too. Other than hmm. impact and having great impact in the world, we care about that. I care about money. It's what helps us invest in even more of our impact and others around us. So this kind of stuff affects your money. Bottom line, it does. Okay. And when I help people on this, they're like, wow, our team's not only doing better and better quality, but it's helping our bottom line. Of course it is because everybody's contributing to the team in a more powerful way. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And one of the things for me, when it comes to recharging, I know it's important that last 30 minutes, an hour before you go to bed. Yeah. One of the things for my personality that gets me into the right flow state for the day after is if I listen to a good book about psychology. So I, know, I wanted to ask if you had some books that specifically maybe go a little bit into flow state, but really yeah. give that inside perspective to ourselves. Yeah. You know, honestly, there's so many out there, you guys, it really depends on where you're coming from as a high performer. Um, if, if you're trying to optimize flow state because you're a person that is just anxious or have, has, you know, just depression in your history, or if you're a person that is an athlete and that's not the case and you're going to a higher level there, there's so many, honestly, so many books out there, but you know, some of my favorite, um, Dr. Caroline Leaf does a lot. If you've ever heard of her, she does something basically on mental, emotional state and activating that in humans in a powerful way. And she talks a lot about the neuroscience and optimizing our brain in that way. And the reason why I mentioned that one is because she is amazing in the research she has done on moving out anxiety, moving out other emotions that cloud our performance as well from a neuroscience space. She has a, a bunch of books out, but her name is Dr. Caroline Leaf. I quote her a lot because I work also in the mental health space and that influences your flow state as well. And she also, like me, talks a lot about the neuroscience of moving out emotions like anxiety, frustration, so that your body, your brain can work more effectively 
actively. Um, she has things for kids. She has things for adults. Um, she has things for all kinds of people. And I can even put that in the notes, um, two or three different books. But that's, she's a really great space to start. And the reason why I start with that one again um, is it's a, it's a great book for those business leaders that usually have anxiety, which a lot of people, business leaders do. I mean, let's just be honest. And she comes at it in a different perspective to help you gain flow states and get rid of that, that cloud, should I say. So there are a lot of her books, and she has so many out. I think that's a great place to start because her books are readable and has also tangible tools like me. Um, I will say this at the end of the day, a good, you know, neuroscience book is amazing, but at the end of the day, having a coach with the frameworks and the accountability to go deeper on some of those concepts, especially if you're not a psychologist or psychiatrist, some of it will feel a little woo woo. But again, that's why I named Dr. Caroline Leaf because she does is she's very applicable on some of the things we're talking about in performance and productivity, but takes into account the anxiety that a lot of business owners are having in the economy we're in right now. You know, so she really creates a little bit of a more effective way of doing that. So I love her books. She's really great. She's probably my number one right now because of where we're at as a society and where people are at and anxiety, among other things. But at the end of the day, those three techniques we gave you is going to be helpful. If you guys have questions on them or you want to go deeper around this neuroscience, there are deeper techniques in a specific order that will really help you in a powerful way. We've talked about how the body and the mind is connected and you can't really separate the two. And one of the things I noticed was you did a TEDx speech. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you what happens to the body when you go on a big stage like <laughs> TEDx? Yeah. You know, thank you for asking. So my second TEDx just came out in July of, of this year, 2024, and it was on the chemistry of resilience. So we've been talking about a little bit, you guys, on a very general level, the chemistry of your brain and body and how it works mm -hmm. best for you for flow state. I talk about the chemistry of resilience, how your mind and body can work for you, not against you. And speaking of Dr. Caroline Leaf, that's why I brought her up too, is um, I talk about how we can move through emotions of anxiety and other things that cloud our judgment as leaders and allow us to move that out so we can have a healthier resilience during hard times. And the reason why I mentioned that, you're like, hey, how are you getting on a stage like that? What do you feel like when you get on a stage like that? Here's the deal, everyone. I love to speak and I love to speak knowledge and wisdom that I believe can be very powerful for others. So when I look at getting on a stage, I will say this, you guys, nerves don't go away. Okay. TEDx is very unique compared to other stages I've been on, but at the end of the day, we all get nervous, but anymore, I take those nerves because get this, everybody, this is chemistry as well. Fear and excitement dump the same neurotransmitters and chemicals in the body. Did you know that? It's all about our perception of where we're thinking those chemicals and neurotransmitters mean. Did you know that? So when I go on stage knowing I can either be in fear going, I'm going to screw it up, or I'm not going to say all the things I want to say, or I'm not going to connect with the audience, or I can take those same nerves that are the same chemicals that are being drafted in my body as they are for fear and say, I'm here to serve. I'm here to give people things that I believe are tools that can be powerful to help them in this case with my second TEDx to mm -hmm. optimize resilience in a healthy way so that you can give your impact and live to your full potential, no matter the environment or adversity. And when I stepped onto that stage, that's what I, I took it as. I had the nerves. I'm like, I do any speaking stage, but you guys, I take those nerves and instead of shifting them into fear. Okay. I shift them in my perspective of excitement. Again, remember your body chemistry, it's dumping the same chemicals and neurotransmitters in it. This is where your brain comes in of what are we perceiving from that? What are we perceiving from that? What are we perceiving? And we have the opportunity as humans with our higher level cortex to shift our perspective and say, this is what I'm going to do to stand into that. So was I able to knock out of the park? You know, was I able to high perform and be in my flow state? Yes, I did get into my flow state. Now, whether it's received well by others, that's obviously not up to me. But as far as me stepping in and giving my performance, it came from a space of knowing I wanted to serve. It came from a space of me doing all these tools, among other ones that I use with my clients, to get into flow state and step on that stage and serve in a powerful way. So um, I use these techniques. I use even deeper techniques that I show my clients. I'm a student always of my work. And 
and I love to speak. And it reminds me when I was an athlete, to be quite frank, about just that nerves kind of before the gun went off. And it wasn't, and I always wondered why that was because I'm not competing on stage, but I realized what it was. I wanted to make sure that I was serving in a way that would inspire people, just like when I would hopefully race and when, you know, that inspired them in a different way. I'm hopefully inspiring people with tools and frameworks that allow them to feel power and empowered to move into a space that works for them and not against them. At the end of the day, whether I'm talking about resilience, the chemistry of that, whether I'm talking about being in flow state performance, whether I'm talking about having you be in a higher level of leadership with your unique leadership traits, these are all things I talk about, you guys. My goal is always that I'm serving you in a powerful way. And if I can give you guys tools to do that as well, to move through the nerves and the emotions that we all have when we're trying to navigate things that we're trying to give to the world, I'm all about it. And that's what I'm here today for. So that's a long answer to your TEDx question, but I loved it. I put myself in flow state. I gave and served in the best way I knew how. I knew how the chemistry of my body worked, and I had to shift my perspective as well as use tools to move into that space where I could serve well, and I feel I did. And then the rest, once it's out there, it's out there, and, and I can't control that. Just like when we as business owners give our product, we can't control how that's received, but we can control how we perform it at a, at a quality that we want to perform it at. So I was happy with it and you guys definitely check it out. It'll be a nice adjunct to what we've talked about today about flow state, because as I mentioned, our emotions can get in the way sometimes of getting into flow. I mentioned a book by Dr. Caroline Leaf. I've mentioned some things in my, my TEDx that will help with that. And we've given you tools today to help with flow state. So you guys have a lot of different opportunities to really get support. But at the end of the day, I have a coach. I believe in coaches. I believe all of us need mentorship at some time, if not a lot, because we can't do this alone. And there's things that I miss even as a as a performance coach, even as a practitioner that has a lot of tools and understand how this works, I can't always see things on the inside of the glass. I miss my blind spots, right? So I'm a big believer in that. So you guys, whether you watch the TEDx, whether you take these tools and start with that first, that's amazing. Or you want to step in and have a conversation with me. I'm here to help you guys live your highest potential because that's such a passion of mine to see leaders truly fully heal themselves optimize this body brain, this temple they have so they can create the impact that they desire and that they deserve to give to the world. So that's me in a nutshell, my friend. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. I agree with you. There is a certain power to coaching in the way of it, it creates that accountability you're working with others and that just <laughs> increases your chances for success. Yes. I can't re remember the number, but it's 90% something. I yeah. can't remember the second one. And I don't even know how quite how they calculated it, but I know it works. I yeah. know that much. And the TEDx will, of course, be down in the show notes. And where you've talked about people can reach out to you, what is the best place to reach you at? Yes, absolutely. So I'm the most active on LinkedIn and Instagram. So LinkedIn is Jennifer Watson. And then on Instagram, it's the Jennifer Watson. I answer my own DMs. And you can also check out my website at jenniferwatsonleadership.com to check out some of my speaking, some of the core things I speak about, as well as some of my coaching programs and support for all of you. And yes, feel free to check out my TEDx, The Chemistry of Resilience. I'm actually going to be going on tour this fall with it because I got such great feedback. So I'm going to specific towns, cities, and giving the speech, but going deeper on the concepts, doing more some interactive activities with the audience and making it very community driven. So I'm really excited about that tour as well. So you guys reach out to me um, if you have questions on this podcast or looking for additional support, or hey, maybe my tour will be in your backyard. And I'm more than happy to have you guys come and be a part of, of the movement. <laughs> Most, I was just about to say, definitely check out when, when, when the tour is and, and where it goes to, because yes. it could be worth checking out.